Jennifer, I had the pleasure to interview Nikki on the same day that you were interviewing Elise. Uh, Nikki is a uh, retired attorney, a uh, previous public defender, a activist, and an author. And she spent about a year on the road traveling south of the Mason-Dixon line, to put it to her words, uh, in Trump land. And she went and interviewed a number of people. And she has a book, My Travels in Jump land, uh, Trump Land, that will actually is actually released today, as I understand it. We have that interview with her, and I'm going to go ahead and roll that. Okay. Hello, Malcontents. I'm David the Malcontent, and we are here with Nikki Blake Shavitz. Nikki, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm joyous, sir. I'm joyous. Oh, Nikki, please don't call me sir. I wore stripes <laughs> once upon a time, but I do appreciate the respect very, very deeply. Nikki is the auntie of Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake was the individual that was shot in Kenosha by the Kenosha police. There was the press conference about two weeks ago where the Kenosha Police Department decided not to press charges on any of the offending officers. Nikki, first of all, would like to express our empathy and compassion, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's very much appreciated. You're going to be releasing a book called My Travels in Trump Land, and you traveled across the United States. Start by telling us about your experiences. I had had a dream the night before. My father was a friend of King's. I mean, I hate to say I had a dream, but I really did. My father came to me in a, a dream, and he said, would I be doing nothing about Trump if I were there? Would I be doing nothing, Nikki? Nothing. You're doing nothing. And I said to myself, well, Daddy, I don't have your charisma. And he says, what do you have? I said, I can write. He said, then write something. So I hit the road and I drove south of the Mason-Dixon line and started interviewing people who self-identified as Trump voters. Mm -hmm. about racism in America. What would you say are your three biggest takeaways from the experience, the three biggest things you learned? Being totally marinated in Trump voters is at times terrifying, um, yet I bonded with many. I felt that many were extremely good people, some misguided and some calculating. I think we all know that Trumpers usually watch Fox News, Breitbart, and very many others that I didn't know the name of, but I do now, but I'm not going to give them airtime, right? Right. Um, let's say con extremely conservative media. What we didn't know, I don't think, is that they exclusively watch it. They exclusively watch it. That means if Fox doesn't cover it, they really don't know. What would you say is the most craziest thing that you were told in doing your interview? I remember he was a banker, a retired banker, and he's on some boards. Sir, what do you think if, like, next year science determines that homosexuality can't be the fault of the individual because it's, it's linked to a gene, and they know exactly what gene it's linked to? And he says, um, I wouldn't care. So I said, if your God put homosexuality on a gene, you, you can't dispute what you're, he says, well, no, you don't understand. I don't believe in science. This is a, a, a hypocrisy issue that, that has driven me crazy. God's law is in the Bible. This is right the law. And I said, okay, so I'm, because I'm Jewish by faith, but I'm a terrible Jew. We eat bacon and all that other stuff. So I'm like... <laughs> All right, so why do you have a tattoo and why do you eat bacon? Well, Jesus said he's the new covenant. Nothing in the Old Testament counts. And I'm like, That's okay, what I say. right, That's right. What I'm like, okay, counts. okay, fine. I get that. Then why do you want to put the Ten Commandments up in front of the courthouse? Because the Ten Commandments are in the Old Testament. And Jesus, you're telling me, is the new covenant. And the new covenant is love thy neighbor as you love God himself and love God. They don't care. It couldn't have been all bad. There has to be a nugget of There's hope in here, of right? There has to be. So could, tell, us, tell us about something where you walked away from a conversation where maybe your view changed. When I, uh, when I challenged him to think, you know, you know, you're really not anti-science. I think some of that he dug the logic of because he says, you know what, Nikki, I think I'm supposed to know you again. And I'd like for you to come down to my church. So your book is coming out at the end of the month. If somebody wants to get your book, where do they go? Uh, bookbaby.com.
Nikki, I want to thank you so much for your time and for coming on to the show. We've been talking with Nikki Blake Shavitz, who is going to be coming out with her book, My Travels in Trump Land, at the end of the month. Nikki, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to reading her book, Jennifer. Yeah, me too. What an interesting project to, you know, partake in. Um, I bet she has some amazing stories in there. She she does. You, 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 you've you teed it up perfectly. And like, it, someone watching this would go like, oh, this is all rehearsed. Like, this is not rehearsed. Um, but you teed it up perfectly because we have a much longer interview version with Nikki, a good 20 minutes worth. Um, we can't show that in the show. We, we, we really want this show to be an hour. Jennifer, we've never had it be an hour. Um, although we hit 90 minutes on the nose, uh, I think the last two times. So we're getting mm-hmm. better. Um, but we will be releasing later this week that longer edition uh, of that interview. We also have a longer uh, version of the Elise uh, interview, and we'll be releasing that also. And what we'll probably do is set those up as a stream. We'll do those as an automated stream, and then they'll be available on demand. Great. Looking forward to, to watching the rest of that one. The other thing I'd like to let our community know, uh, we uh, we use Restream, so the chats are all integrated across the four channels that we're watching on, unless you're watching on Twitter. And because technically Twitter's the fifth, like people need to know that. Nikki is in the comments right now. So if you have questions, I could tell you Nikki's going to love to answer them. Um, And you can have an AMA going on, Ask Me Anything, with Nikki in the comments as we continue to move along with Happy Hour. And Jennifer, with that, we're going to do another pause for the cause. Okay. Black Coffee is a hub for communities and a hub for meeting people, making friends and understanding. What Black Coffee is to me is a place to actually call home, a place where Black youth will feel welcomed, where Black families will come and feel like they're at home. What we're trying to build is more than just coffee. Community is something that we do naturally. We know who's in the community, we know what the deficits are, and we're trying to fix that. We want to bring people together. My hope is that the phrase grounded in excellence shows up everywhere and that it becomes a movement. I'm looking forward to hanging out um, at Black Coffee with my friends and feeling safe. Black Coffee, to me, means opportunity for people like me and my other friends and family to come here and do homework safely and hang out and stuff like that. That is happening. It is happening. Black Coffee Northwest is located in Shoreline, Washington on Highway 99. Uh, I believe it's between like 170th and 180th. I want to say it's like around 175th. It is on the west side of Highway 99. They are open Monday through Saturday. And I know their hours have wiggled a little bit, so I don't want to give you the wrong hours, but you can check on their Facebook page or their website. Their coffee is amazing. And the potato scones. Jennifer, potato scones. I didn't even know this was a thing until I went to Black Coffee. Yeah, and you talk about them a lot, so I feel like they must be really good and you have a problem with them. It, it, it's like a scone and a baked potato with, with cheese and onion had a baby. Oh, man. I'm vegan. I can't have it. But Oh, because <laughs> so- of the cheese. They do have vegan stuff there, but I can't say um, exactly what. The other thing, I did not know you were vegan. Learned something new. Yeah. Uh, another thing on like total vegan, there's a... Uh, in Kirkland, we have a midnight cookie company that opened up, and what? they're open from 4 to midnight, 4 p.m. Wow. to midnight. This is dangerous. And yeah. they do have Thank vegan you. cookies. Oh, thanks. They also have vegan ice cream. Uh, trying to kill me here. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to go ahead and go to our next